So I'm from a large ocean state, uh, which means that the ocean means a lot to our people. Essentially, it's where oxygen comes from, but it's also one of the biggest sources of protein in our diets. It's been the source of entertainment uh, growing up. That's where you spend a lot of your time as a child. To me, the ocean means home. Not only is it a home to diverse marine fauna and flora, but it's always been home to me as a Pacific Islander. It was home to my ancestors, it is home to me now, and it will be home to future generations. To me, the ocean means healing. It means uh, recovery and nourishment. Um, it's a place that fed me growing up, and it's a place that I still run to, to this day, for calmness and reflection. Well, boy, at this point in my life, the ocean is everything to me. It is my career. It is the place I feel most at peace and happy and complete. And uh, it also is fundamental to the health of the planet. It's everything. And a term that we use a lot in the Pacific is that the, the ocean is our greatest endowment fund inherited from our ancestors. I think it's important to recognize the many different meanings that different people hold to the ocean. For many, it's a way of life. For many, it's their main source of food. For other people, it's a deep spiritual connection. There's so many different values to the ocean. I gather available data online to help me form my research project. I also use websites such as NOAA to help me predict or know when the next low tide is so that I can go out and collect samples. The native Hawaiians have precious knowledge on the seaweed or limo as they call it here. I am a legislator. Um, ocean information and knowledge helps guide my decision making with policies that are introduced and those that exist. I use uh, ocean knowledge and information as a lecturer. I have to teach students, undergraduate students, master, uh, postgraduate students, also my own uh, research when I'm doing publications and so on. What I like to do is really use the best quality science to address the most important and pertinent research questions that can address our conservation concerns. And then I want to take what I learn and turn them into stories that can engage absolutely everyone. I use ocean information for everything I do practically because I teach about it. I use ocean knowledge to inform policymakers where I can uh, and the knowledge that I've accumulated over the years. And I also try to communicate with the public, students and others about the importance of the oceans. I think that the, the most significant challenge that we have to overcome is the self-perpetuating deep inequality when it comes to access to finance, vessels, technology, infrastructure, academic champions. It's these deep inequalities that we need to overcome. One of the key issues, I think, in marine conservation is this idea of parachute science. Parachute science or colonial science is is where you have scientists, researchers, conservationists, you name it, coming in from the global north, uh, from Western countries to countries like mine in the global south, conducting research and leaving without any investment in the local capacity or infrastructure. What happens here is that it cripples uh, ongoing conservation efforts, it undermines these local efforts that are going on, and also it's not a very sustainable model. Oftentimes there are colonial histories sort of overlaid in that where, you know, Western sort of Euro, uh, Euro American sort of um, interests have come in and colonize particular areas, limiting um, indigenous people's access or restricting it altogether and not including them in processes. Certainly the um, high cost and limited availability of resources for studying the deep ocean 
is a challenge for providing global access. In my view, the most significant challenge is access to resources. Because I grew up in the Marianas and because we live very close to the Marianas Trench, you would think that we'd have the opportunity to visit the trench, um, to explore the area, but we have not. My top tip for achieving global stewardship is really to reveal the, the marine ecosystems of the deep sea, to share with many more people their magic. If we don't share this privilege, and if we don't show people these incredible places, then um, I don't think we can build that, that care. And, and people, people really need to see and understand and so I think it's ocean literacy initiatives, it's recognizing existing connections and working with them. When I think about fair access to the benefits, uh, you think about many things that are there that you are not able to, you are not accessing. And I think uh, education, uh, educating people about it is very important. Informing, the, informing people that the ocean is it has a lot of resources that can be utilized. For us to have a more inclusive way of conducting science within the deep ocean, um, we need to work more collaboratively and recognize that many areas around the world don't have the necessary equipment or collaborations or even resources to be able to explore um, the deep parts of our ocean. So for me, if we truly want to save our oceans, every coastline needs a local hero. And we will only find those local heroes if we are investing in people rather than taking away their opportunities. We need to recognize that Indigenous people need to have a, a role in their own home. We need to include them in discussions and that they can have value in the way we manage particular areas. I'm hoping that, um, you know, as scientists that, that sort of view this video, that they can challenge themselves to be more open and to think about some of these issues and to be uh, willing to try to reach out and, and, and make these um, alliances and connections. I think that we need to pay more attention to the next generation of people on this planet, the 12 to 25 year olds who are going to basically inherit and oversee the ocean and the rest of the planet going forward. My best experience of working within the marine field um, would have to be a submersible dive off the coast of Aldabra, which is a UNESCO World Heritage Site in the Seychelles. And being able to see the corals change from zero down to 10, 30, 100 meters is something that will live in my memory forever. My best ocean experience would be visiting the Challenger Deep in the Marianas Trench. As the first Pacific Islander to do so, this strengthened my connection to my culture and also made me embrace my Pacific Islander heritage even more. In the last few years, uh, I've been fortunate enough to be part of projects that have uh, incorporated policy development and capacity building for utilization. Uh, of marine genetic resources, particularly uh, benefit sharing policy development uh, as countries start to implement the Nagoya Protocol as they sign up to it. And this has given me the opportunity to like visit communities and also participate in workshops and meetings. So for me, that was standing under the chandeliers in the, in the South African cabinet and, and the moment is when our government uh, took the decision to declare 20 new marine protected areas for South Africa. It's 97% of our protected area network in a single step. Um, in 2016, we really pushed as a community for um, the expansion of the monument. Um, and 
uh, through advocacy, through public hearings and, and, and arguments sometimes with the commercial fishing industries, um, you know, and working with senators and stuff like that, we were able to push this through. Um, I think, you know, it was definitely uh, uh, a surreal moment when um, President Barack Obama came to Hawaii and announced the, um, the expansion. And I feel like I've been blessed. I have so many incredible milestones. But one of the key things is today, there are more people than ever before in our history wanting to go into marine science, wanting to go into marine conservation, wanting to understand the oceans, wanting to contribute no matter what their background or their field or their job is.